The, the children travelled from Wandsworth Junction to Shalford Station by steam train and then they uh, boarded a number of coaches and there were two vintage London buses uh, in the convoy that came up to the green arriving uh, at about 20 past 12. On the village green we have uh, the Wandsworth Museum have erected a, a military tent with an uh, atmospheric program lasting half an hour with all the appropriate noises. We've got a large marquee with displays of artefacts uh, related to the period of the evacuation in 1939. We have the on parade group who all dress up for the period and can tell you a lot about the role that they're supposed to play as land girls or as uh, um, bomb disposal people or the v village policemen or whatever. Uh, so a lot of people have been dressed up for the period. I didn't come to Shamley Green first, I went to uh, Farncombe. Then I transferred because my school was at Shamley Green so they transferred me to Shamley Green. And my first billet was with the local post office until a vacancy came for Real Hall. I don't know if you heard of it, but it was uh, 11 boys and a magnificent uh, place, so yeah. it was a real cachet to get in there. So what are your memories of Shamley Green? Are they happy ones? Yes, yes, especially Real Hall, because the Roper family who owned it, Mrs Roper, she had uh, the billeting authorities came around and said, you've got a maid and this, you can take four evacuees. She said, give me two teachers, I'll take 11. And she did. And it was the billet in Shamley Green. It yeah. was an achievement to get a place there. And at uh, the age of uh, nine, ten, it was all fun. Steph, could you yes. tell us sort of how this project originated? It originated with the very thing that's in Andrew's hand, which is the original logbook of Mr. Uh, Cross Keys, who was the headmaster who was evacuated here in 1939. And we've had it for a number of years, and then we've also worked very closely with Wandsworth Museum. And then in a chance conversation, we said, well, we've got this logbook, would you like to look at it? And it snowballed from there. And Andrew very kindly said, well, why don't we sort of organize an evacuation? And I said, well, I could get a train, and then we could get the coaches, and then we could get some of the old evacuees back, and that's exactly what's happened, and so we're here. Bringing history to life, you know, recreating moments in time is, is, is a, as you can see, is a yeah. fantastic way of getting children to understand and experience what has gone before. And a lot of the evacuees that allow us to actually record their memories and thoughts have supplied images. It actually allows us to recreate a time and place in a way which perhaps in the past it wasn't possible to do. In 1939, I came here when I was eight uh, for two years. It was definitely strange. In one way, it was good to think we were going away to the country, and I had my brother with me, so that helped a lot. Um, I stayed in a lady's house just down the road. They had no children, but they had this wonderful dog, and he was adorable. It was okay, because I knew quite a lot of friends anyway, but kept thinking, well, my mother will come down one day. And your, vi your mother visited you once she while you She came once, yes. Yeah. And uh, a, a friend of mine who lived next door to me went to the same school as me, but she was vi billeted up the road in Newhurst, so she was invited down for the day, um, which was nice to see her, obviously. Yeah. The Canadians, I think the Canadian uh, Air Force were billeted here somewhere, and um, they used to do, we had our gas masks on, tested by them. It seems in the diary, Mine got a hole in it and I was coughing and splattering, so it wasn't, that wasn't, I remember that, that wasn't much fun. No. no. Um, they went to church and we used to pump, my brother and I used to pump the organ for the Canadians and I counted to 25 while he pumped, then he counted to 25 while I pumped and we got a bar of chocolate afterwards, so <laughs> that was quite fun. Well, I'm Mickey the Fish, the well-known Spiv from East London. Everyone looks down upon the old Spiv, but the old Spiv also got some good stuff for the people who couldn't afford the real stuff. You know, he wasn't a villain all the time. All right, the last time I went to church, that's when I took the lead off the roof. Now, I've come down here today to give me a bit of colour, talk to the kids about, about what a Spiv should do. I don't think they've got into that yet. The kids are enjoying it, like, you know, I've told them a few little anecdotes, what they won't get in the classes. All good stuff, as Max Miller would say, out of the white book, not the blue book. 
OK, folks, nice to speak to you. I'm off now. Toodaloo. We couldn't have had a better day weather-wise, and it's been dry beforehand, so superb day for them. I hope very memorable for all of them, uh, and that they will go back and follow up uh, some of this in their schoolwork uh, in the coming weeks.